So here I want to walk through a number guess game and just show the structure of that game as well as introduce a new method such as add event listener. Add event listener is another way to add event detection to our page. You can also use uh, inline events such as on click or um, mouse uh, on mouse over. Um, and those will uh, usually be placed with, with inline within your HTML, such as with an image, an anchor, or a button. Here you can um, have an ID, or you could also have um, uh, buttons as well. And you can reference those objects and then add event listener method to it. So I'll demonstrate that in just a second. So let me show you how, how this page works, how, how the game works. I'll go ahead and refresh this in Firefox. And we'll start off with the number 10. And it's going to be guessing a number between 1 and 20. So my guess was too low. I'll try 15. My guess was still too low, so I'll try 20. The guess was too high. Let me try 17. I'll see if I can get it in one more guess. Okay, that was still too high, so this will be my last one. 16. Okay, got it. Great. All right, so to come back to the game and to see the structure of how it's built, so first of all, my page is made up of a, uh, it's, it's a very simple page. I just have an input text field. I have a button, and then there's a, a ID area for output. And right now it just contains text that says, guess a number between one and 20. So this is really the body of that right here. Now around the whole area, I actually add an ID for game area. All right, so then I can style that in my cascading style sheet so I can center the whole game and add a background to it. Okay, so the whole game, the main game, is nested between the ID of game area. Now, we want to uh, just reference here that we have a input, which is an input type of text. Uh, there's a placeholder text that's put in there, and then I have an ID here that I can reference later. Um, the button also has an ID of guess and it has a type of button. Okay, let me come down to our script. And in the script, the first thing that I do is create a random number. And it's gonna be between uh, one and 20. It'll be between zero and 19, but then I add one. Notice the math.floor and the math.random. On 35, we declare a variable called player guess. And then 36 through 38, I'm declaring variables and I'm loading the content that is from the input ID, the output ID, and the guess ID. So on line 38, button is now equal to the button on the page. User output will be equal to um, that the information guess a number between 1 and 20, and user input will be equal to whatever is typed into the text field. Now it's not quite that straightforward. It's actually equal to those objects, and then I'll, um, I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So here's our function. This function is called every single time we, we press the button. In order to reference that, let me come down here to the add event listener first. So you can add an add event listener to um, any images or to any area or anchor. That's really simple. Um, you could just reference the ID as I did above. So just say like button equals um, document .get element by ID. And then we can reference that ID. So here I'm referencing button, and I add add event listener to, to it. This is the actual event here. So you could have uh, mouse over or, uh, or, or, uh, or on mouse out. Here we have a click, and that's going to be treated as a string here. I have a, a comma. This here, this part here, is the name of the function that it calls. So there's three arguments. This is the event type the function that's called, and then the false and true argument is going to affect the bubbling. And we'll get into that more later about just, um, just about the order of operation with, with, with the event detection. Most of the time, you're going to be using false, so you can use that as your default. All right, so we call this, when we click on it, it calls this function play game. And it comes down here and it gets player guess. Now, if you remember, player guess was established as a variable up here on line 35. It's just actually a blank variable, but what it's gonna do is we're gonna load into it the user input dot value. User input was established from the get element by ID input. It was established from line 25 
uh, from our input text field. So there's the ID of input, and that's now user input is equal to that. So if I say user input dot value, then it's actually getting the data that was typed into that into that text field. We're going to store that into a new variable called player guess. Um, notice that, uh, that I'm using parse int, so it's converting it to a number. Parse int is going to have two arguments here. The 10, most of the time, um, you will be typing in decimal, but you could have an argument here of using uh, binary or uh, hex uh, if you want. Uh, so just as a default, we'll go ahead and type 10 in there. Um, it, it helps in case there's some weird instances of errors. Um, as, as Doug Crockford talks about, there might be an instance where someone would type in like a 0, 05 or a 0, 08, for example, if they're going to be, um, if they're going to be typing in a date. And then if you type a 0, 08 and you don't have the number 10 in here, it might recognize it as a different numbering system. So it's just a good idea to go ahead and, um, have the numbering system base 10, if that's what you're going to be using. Okay, so this will convert uh, whatever the person typed in, user input into a number, and load that into player guess. And then really simply within this function play game, we actually just evaluate it. We're going to um, evaluate it against the random number that was generated. And then if it's, if, it's, um, if it's higher than it, then we'll return in the output field you guess was too high. If it's lower than, then it was too low. If it's correct, then we return correct. And that's really simple. At this time, there is no limit to the, to the, to the number of guesses. Um, so you can continue to guess to your heart's content until you were to get it. But you see, it's actually quite simple. The, other, the only other thing to mention, as you may have noticed, is there's a few things in here that are going to apply to JS Lint. So there's um, a comment tag in here, which you may have been wondering about. And then within this function, it says use strict. And that's so it's going to validate or pass uh, when I check my code within uh, JS Hint or JS Lint. And I'll talk about that in a little bit.